Okay, so we continue from where we left off concerning our lesson on present value. So what we are going to do is that we are going to look at the present value of a mixed stream of cash flows, like I explained earlier. And I told you that the present value of a mixed stream of, of cash flows, in other words, different expected cash flows from different years. We are going to discount all of them year by year. So let's assume we are dealing with five years. If you are dealing with five years, then it means that cash flow of year one will be discounted. One plus K raised to the power. In this case, it will be raised to the power one because we are dealing with year one. That is the number of years. And then in the second year, the cash flow of year two, we add that, will be discounted one plus K raised to the power two. In that order, in year three, is going to be plus cash flow of year three over one plus K raised to the power three plus up to the last year. So cash flow of year N will be discounted by one plus K raised to the power N. And so if you are dealing with the present value of mixed stream of cash flows, in other words, you are not just dealing with one amount, but then the cash flows that are going to come into the business will come at different years, different times. Now what we are going to do is that each year's cash flow will be discounted separately by the number, using the discounting factor based on the number of years that we are waiting to receive that cash flow. So after we have discounted the individual cash flows, we can add all of them and then the total becomes the present value of the total return on the investment. And that is what we are going to do. And so we are going to pick a question and then I'm going to solve that question and then I'm going to use this mathematical way to solve. And then I'm going to also teach you a tabular way of going about it so that you'll be able to understand. Okay. So let us look at this question. You have invested in a fixed deposit with a bank and you are expecting the following cash flows for the next four years. So these are your cash flows. In year one, you're expecting 4,000 Ghana cities. In year two, 6,000 Ghana cities. In year three, 8,000. And, and in year four, you are expecting to receive 10,000 Ghana cities. If the interest rate paid by banks currently is 10%, determine the present value of the cash flows. And so this is a mixed stream. You have made an investment in a bank and then you are expecting yearly annual cash flows from the investment. And then you have been given the expected cash flow for each year. And then you know that the interest rate applicable is 10%. That is the cost of capital. And so we are going to use this approach to find the present value of the cash flows. Now, what you need to understand is that these present values, these cash flows are year specific. So we are going to use the same approach. So for your present value, what you need to do is to find the present value of each individual cash flow like I've explained to you. And so in year one, the expected cash flow is 4,000 Ghana cities and it's going to be divided by one plus K. In this case, the K is 10%. That is the rate of interest. So it will be 0 0.1 and then it will be raised to the power one. Raised to the power one because that is year one's expected cash flow. And then we look to the second year. The cash flow for the second year from the question is 6,000 Ghana cities. So 6,000 divided by one plus K, the same 10%, so one plus 0 0.10 raised to the power two. We are raising it to the power two because it is in year two. And then in year three, the cash flow is 8,000. So 8,000 divided by one plus 0 0.10 raised to the power three. That is year three. And then the final year, which is 10,000, we have 10,000 divided by one plus 0 0.1 raised to the power four because we are in year four. So that is how to go about it. So in other words, we are finding the normal present value that we know, the PV. We are finding it for each year separately. And when we are done, because of the addition sign, we add all of them to get the total present value of the return phase of the cash uh, investment. And so what we are trying to do now, we discount the first year. And so the present value of this discounted cash flow is going to be 3,636 Ghana City. Plus, we discount the second year as well. 
And that is going to give us 4,956 plus. Let's discount the 8,000 with this discounting factor. And that is going to give us 6,008 Ghana cities. And then finally, we are going to discount the 10,000 four years back. And that is going to give us 6,830. And so what we have actually done is that this 3,636 Ghana CD is the present value of this 4,000. This 4,956 is the present value of this 6,000 in that order. So we have found the present value of each of the cash flows. Now, the total present value is what we are looking for, for the return phase of the investment. And so when we add up this, this, that, and that, then we are going to get the total, which is in Ghana CD, 21,430 Ghana cities. And so this is how to go by the how to go by finding your present value for a mixed stream of cash flows. Now, this presentation is more mathematical. I'm going to show you a different approach where I will make it a tabular way and then I'm going to use the present value table to teach you. Now, with the present value table, uh, it's a table that you can pick your discounting factor from straight away. But it is also an approach where you can use your calculator to still get a discounting factor. I see that presentation more appropriate and I've been using that in my exams over and over. I don't really go by this approach. So I'm going to teach, even though this is not wrong, but there are some instances where that tabular presentation will be more presentable, especially in complex situations. So I'm going to use this same question and present it in the other way so that you understand that as well and then it will be more beneficial for you. Okay. Let us solve this same question with the approach that I'm talking about. Now, this is the approach. You are going to say here and then you create a column for the cash flows. And then you create a column for the discounting factor. And then the present value. So the discounting factor, you can put 10% here in brackets. And then present value in Ghana City. The cash flows also in Ghana cities. And then the number of years. So you are somehow tabulating it. So in year one, year two, year three, and then year four. In year one, from the question, the, present, the cash flow, expected cash flow is 4,000. In year two, we are expecting 6,000. 8,000 for year three, and then 10,000 Ghana cities for year four. What I have done is just to repeat what has been given to us in the question. These two is where we are actually going to do the solution. So the discounting factor, remember that I told you now, when we were discounting 4,000, we said that it is 4,000 over 1 plus uh, 0.10 raised to the power 1. Now, another way of writing this is 4,000 times 1 over 0, over 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to the power 1. In other words, the discounting factor, which is cash flow over 1 plus K raised to the power N, could be rewritten as the cash flow multiplying 1 over 1 plus k raised to the power n. And this, when this is written separate, it is called the discounting factor. And so once we have the cash flow here, we need to multiply by the discounting factor to get a present value. And therefore, we need to only find the value for 1 over, not the whole cash flows. Remember that I taught you that in the previous part of the video. And so 1 over 1 plus k raised to the power n becomes the discounting factor. And so you pick your calculator and then you punch 1 over. So in this case, it's going to be 1 over 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to the power 1. So when you punch this on your calculator, it's going to give you a discounting factor. This discounting factor that you are going to get can also be gotten from the present value table without using any calculator. Okay, so if you have access to the present value tables, you just trace 10% at year one, and then you put it there. Some of you may not know how to use the present value table. I'll try and get that for you later. And so that is it. So if you don't know how to use the present value table or you have not seen it before, just go by the approach that I'm giving you. And so the 4,000 in year one, you take your calculator and then you punch one over 
1 plus 0 0.10 all raised to the power 10. Then you put the answer here. And that is going to be 0 0.909. You can try that and then let's see. Now, this 0 0.909 is a discounting factor. Okay, and so when you multiply this by that, you should get the present value. And it should be the same as what we had from the previous solution. What we have done is that we have taken out the cash flow and we are finding one over the discounting factor. So afterwards, when we multiply that factor by the cash flow, or in other words, when we shift the cash flow to be the numerator, we should still be able to get the same present value. And that is what I'm talking about. So when you separate the cash flow, the discounting factor that you have when you multiply by the cash flow, should give you the same present value. But in this way, we are just listing our discounting factor. And it should be written to three decimal places. That is what we are trying to see. So that is the discounting factor for the first year. Now, in the second year, it's going to be the same 1 over 1 plus 0 0.10. But we know this time it will be raised to the power 2. So you take your calculator and then you punch 1 over You take your calculator and you punch 1 over 1 plus 0 0.10. This time raised to the power 2. And it's going to give you the discounting factor for the second year. And that is 0 0.826. And then in the third year, you are also going to use the same approach. 1 over 1 plus 0 0.1. This time raised to the power 3 because you want the discounting factor for the third year. Please, it's going to change question by question depending on the percentage you are giving. If it was 15%, it would have changed. We are dealing with 10%. So raise to the power 3 is going to give us 0 0.751, three decimal places. And then in the final year, we are going to get 0 0.683. That is when we change this to raise to the power 4. And so what we have actually done is that we have found the discounting factor for each of the years. Now, to find the present value, you need to multiply the discounting factors by the cash flows to get a present value. And so 4,000 multiplying 0 0.909 is going to give us 3,636, just as we got from the previous calculation. Now, 6,000 multiplying 0 0.826 is going to give us 4,956, which is exactly the same as what we got from the previous calculation. 8,000 multiplying 0 0.5 and 751 is going to give us 6,008, exactly what we got from the previous calculation. And then 10,000 multiplying 0 0.683 is going to give us 6,830, exactly what we got from the previous calculation. And so we can now find the total to become the total present value. And the total is going to be 21,430. And so ladies and gentlemen, you see that approach and this approach, I don't know which one will look easier for you. You may prefer the previous approach, but I see this approach to be more professional. And so when we go by this approach, it will help us. Now, in our next videos on financial management, we are going to begin uh, after the annuity, we are also going to look at, um, at capital budgeting and investment appraiser. And that is where we are going to look at the net present value. We are going to use the approach and then we will proceed to look at the internal rate of return. So I think it is better that you also abreast yourself with this type of presentation so that when we begin to look at that for the net present value and then the internal rate of return, you would still be on the same page with all of us. Okay. Okay, so this will bring us to the end of our video on the time value of money part three, which is the uh, net present value. Now, what we have next to do is annuities. We'll look at present value of annuities and then the future value of annuities as well. But remember that I said we we'll also look at investment appraisal. And so we are on the path to building our financial management strength. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you are new. Share this video and let others also have a benefit. And until we meet again for another video, it is bye for now.